Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. And um, a viewer asked me a question about how the silky saws fit into this Roaring Fire tool roll. This is the pack mule. Um, so I was about to answer it and thought I better um, just show you. Anyway, what I've got is, is some different silky saws. This is obviously the large one. It's too big. Um, not only is it too big that way, it doesn't fit down into the pockets. But here's some examples of some other silky saws that do fit. Um, these are two of the Outbacks, these are brand new. So I've got the 240 and the 170, um, and these actually slide in and out really, really well. That's another thing, you know, when you get to the kind of the gummier um, sticky handles. Uh, but anyway, the 170 uh, fits great. The 130 here is, is totally fine um, across the pockets. And then here is uh, another 170 with the um, kind of the rubberized coating on it. And I think you can still read that on the blade, um, 170. And this guy slides down across the pockets. So once they're in, um, they behave pretty much the same as tools. And so what I was curious about is, wait a minute, maybe there's another option for this as well if you were building a, a bush crafting kit or something like that. Um, but anyway, let me get on to the main topic. And it is the difference between the Knipex, which is pronounced Knipex according to the Knipex company. Uh, every time I do one of the videos, some people say it's actually Nipex. I, I, I used to think it was Nipex too. Um, I mentioned that my Snap-on dealer who sells these often will use both Knipex and Nipex interchangeably in the same sentence, um, probably just to avoid the issue, but um, it sounds like it's a hard K. Yes, I know, but anyway. What I've got are the, the 180s of both the Knipex Cobra. This is an older model. I don't have the new one yet, I guess, of the, the uh, Cobra where they put a finer tooth in, kind of like this guy here. Um, and then I've got a couple of old alligators. Um, and this is a, a seven, and this is a nine position, seven position, nine position. So the question is, why would you get an alligator when you could get a cobra? Um, well, here they are. Now, a couple of things. This, I imagine, in the new one uh, has maybe an extended range because I've noticed when I compare the, the fine tooth cobra to the, the coarser tooth cobra in the, in the 250, I've got both that it's actually bigger in the to in the um, fine tooth but the mechanism uh, is different so let's take a look both of them use kind of a box construction but you can see that the box is reversed um, in this case the box is in the hand in the the cobra the box is in the handle and the blade slides up uh, through the top whereas here the box is in the top and the blade um, the lower part slides back and forth. So they are uh, somewhat different in their design. Now this obviously requires an, kind of this absolute positioning, which sometimes is a pain because it sticks. It's like a, you know, a classic slip joint or if you've got an old crescent wrench, it's starting to space out a little bit. Sometimes you can wedge it in, you can even break them. But anyway, so it's, it's a little bit limiting there. And I thought, you know, like a lot of tool questions when I go to Google and ask, you know, you end up in some forum where people are, you know, in each other's throats about which particular screwdriver shaft with blade material is better. And anyway, I didn't find a whole lot of difference here. Um, not a lot of opinions, so maybe I'll start something. So what, what's going on? First of all, this one right now on Amazon um, is selling for about $32, $33, something like that. This one you, you could get for $24. So there's about a $10 difference or about almost a 50% more um, in price. The shape, the function, uh, the Cobra seems to have a little bit finer jaw. Again, I don't have the current versions of these, so I don't know if they've changed it, but you can see there's a little bit of difference there. Handles, very similar. The, obviously, this is the main mechanism. So why wouldn't you want something like this? And I dug through the uh, Knipex site, and I was thinking, you know, they ought to explain why why would you want one over the other besides price. And there was one word at the very end of the description, and that clarified it. And that is the word outdoors. They recommended this for work 
outdoors. And I thought, well, sure, if I'm doing something, you know, even though these are water pump pliers, because probably the shape, like a pump handle, um, although some people argue that's not the case. Anyway, they're used a lot in the irrigation, plumbing, etc. But if I took both of these and stuck them in the mud and then tried to quickly use them across, you know, different sized uh, nuts, fasteners, pipes, couplers, whatever, uh, this one might be a little bit easier and faster to use. Simpler, simpler to clean. There's no spring. There's no mechanism that can break, really, unless you break the whole plier. This one can get gummed up, jammed up. Um, and maybe not even hold very well. I have never had that happen with Knipex, but I could imagine, you know, that if I if I filled this little thing in here, you can see, um, with dirt or sand, it might not seat right. You know, so it could slip or it could just become immovable. Whereas this one, you know, you could probably spit on it and clean it off or just force it because that's all there is, are these two pieces. Whereas this has got two pieces here, plus the spring, the screw, and then this is actually two pieces um, because there is a push button on the top and I've, I've got an older set of Cobras, you've probably seen them in my videos where I lost that button and I'm not gonna pay 10 bucks for a new button. But anyway, um, I do think that there is a, 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 a um, kind of a fragility here, if you will. This could be a little bit fragile you know, in a, in a really hard use, um, mucky environment. So that's why I think this one is still a popular one, less expensive and probably considerably less finicky when it is, um, when it's dirty. So, uh, no point in getting rid of any alligators soon. In fact, alligator, if you think about it, you know, might live in a swamp. Maybe there's some naming there. I don't know. Could be covered in dirt. It's underwater. Interesting. Um, versus a cobra, you know, stays pretty clean. People leave it alone. Um, I don't know. Anyway, but I do think that uh, the cobras in um, this case, especially the regular large cobra or the slimline, you know, these aren't the things that you're, you're wailing on large pipes with. Although, you know, there is a big version, which I do have, um, that seems super durable. And then this guy is hard use. I mean, this is for really cranking on, on stuff. Um, but it's the mechanism is solid. Uh, my guess is simply it is just the, whether or not it gunks up. Let me know in the comments if you've got experience with both of these. Um, and if you run into that, have you gumped up your, your Cobras or your, your Cobra mechanism here? Um, or ever had failure or had to stop and clean it out? Um, and if you've got alligators, do you like them? I mean, I, I rarely grab them simply because of that issue. They're just, when you're, you're, you're uh, trying to seed it, it's just a, that hint of old-fashioned frustration that I remember with standard slip joints. Uh, or not slip joints, um, tongue and grooves. Anyway, so I'm quick to grab the Cobras. And the fine ones are even better because you can really line up exactly where you want that hand placement. But there we go. Tell me what you think um, about alligators versus cobras. And with that, Doc out.